Hi everyone, this is Pete here. So very good day to all of you. Now, I'm very happy to have joined you guys in this session and I want to thank uh, the Next Level uh, company, right, for inviting me to share with you guys this opportunity on real estate investing. Now, um, today what I'm going to do is I want to give you guys as much value as possible and I want to make sure that all of you here, after you have attended this session, you will know what exactly to do because to be very honest, I'm not the first one and I wouldn't be the last one to talk to you about real estate investing. But I want to tell you something that I will be probably the only one that will tell you the truth because this is an industry that is quite complicated and that's where I come in and assist my client. Okay, So for those of you who haven't met me before, let me just introduce myself very quickly. My name is Pete and I have been investing in property uh, for almost coming to a decade, right? And previously, I actually worked as a portfolio manager, right? And when I work with my clients, they always ask me like, hey, Pete, you know, uh, after you have sorted out our stock market investing, right, the portfolio investment side of the house, how about property? And in fact, most of the time, uh, when people talk about their investment, I believe most of you as well, property is perhaps one of the largest investment that you guys will ever do in your life, right? For the majority of you who are watching this, especially for those of you from Singapore. Okay, now let me uh, quickly do a quick sound check before I begin. Guys, can you all hear me? If you can, just type in the chat, right? Uh, right now, do you own a property? Yes or no? Okay, let's start with a simple question. Now, along the way throughout this one hour session, I want to share as much as possible and uh, I would like you to be interactive with me, right? Because the more interactive with me, then the more you will get back uh, from this session, okay? And at the end of this session, I'll also share with you an opportunity that I've extended to the Next Level uh, members, right? The community at the Next Level here. And um, if you want to know what that deal is, okay? I'll share with you at the end of this session, okay? So that is to get you to watch until the end of the session. Uh. Okay, so you can see I'm very open about this whole thing. I can tell you I have an objective here, but... Don't worry, even if at the end of the day, okay, you're not able to take the deal, you will also get a lot from this session. Okay, so guys, uh, if you're ready, let's dive straight into today's session. Now, I just want to start today's session by talking about uh, a case study that uh, actually I've personally dealt with, right? It was a real case study, but I'll just change some of the people's name, but I'll show you actual screenshots and actual discussion about what actually took place. And I want you guys along the way as I go through this uh, real life case study uh, to really uh, pay attention to what are the certain pitfalls that many investors out there, right, um, fall prey to. Okay, so I don't want that to happen to you as well. Okay, now, um, if you all can look at the screen over here, can you see that uh, I, have a, I have a development here for you? Now, I just want you all to uh, have a guess. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe you all saw it already. <laughs> okay. I wanted to have a guess uh, very quickly what uh, or which development is this. Okay. All right. You can look at the picture. This is a very iconic, uh, the, the, the M shape. Uh, I call it the McDonald <laughs> uh, drop off point. Okay. So if you go to this condo, you see drop off point, right? You'll see a McDonald uh, M shape kind of layout over here. Okay. So what, what, what development is this? Okay. All right. Type in the chat. Uh, if you know the answer, type in the chat. Now, this is actually one of the most uh, one of the largest, actually, I think, uh, of uh, condo development in Singapore right now. When I say largest, I don't mean land size. What I mean is by the number of units, okay? And this is none other, none other than Treasure at Tampines, right? Now, a lot of times when I talk about Treasure at Tampines, back in the days uh, when I was talking about this as one of the uh, strongest property uh, or in terms of investment uh, that you can do, right? There were a lot of concerns, okay? And in fact, one of the main concerns that people uh, tell me is actually what I just told you. And basically, they will say, hey, Pete, you know, um, there's a lot of units, okay? Now, make a guess. How many units are there uh, in Treasure Nepalese? Or for those of you who live in the East, uh, you probably would have uh, known this answer as well, right? It is close to 2,200 units. Uh. 2,200 units. Now, this is quite a fair bit because... Second to them, right, is actually a development that has 1,800 units. So it's actually not a small difference. Huh? Okay, the second one is actually quite far behind, 400 units less. Now, if you think about it from this perspective, some development doesn't even have 400 <laughs> units, okay? So this development is absolutely huge, 
right? And a lot of times the concern that I have from my student is, for example, one of uh, them, when they contacted me back then, uh, right? They say, hey, Pete, you know, um, Treasure has uh, 2,000 units, you know, 2,000 units. Okay, so this was 2021 in May. Uh, I just covered the name. Like, I call her Miss Worry because she was very worried, right? She said, hey, Pete, you know, Treasure at Tampines has over 2,000 units. Wouldn't there be a lot of uh, uh, competition, right? And I think she's not wrong, you know, right? She's not She's not wrong. But the, the thing I want you all to think about is, hey, um, is there a reason why uh, Pete is talking about this? Okay, right? And basically, I replied to her. I said, hey, you know, uh, surrounding, there's no other condo. So number one thing I want you all to take note is that I'm focusing on one aspect here as a property investor. And that's how I help many of my clients as well, over 200 of them. How I help them to achieve uh, six-figure profit, right? Pretty consistently, right? It's because one thing I always focus on is this word called supply, okay? Right, guys, type in the chat to remind yourself when you're looking at property, always look at supply. Because in Singapore, um, demand is pretty fixed, right? Our population doesn't really change that much. Uh, it generally grows about 1% a year. Not true organically, okay? We are not having enough children, but... We, we bring in uh, foreigners, you know, migration, and that increase our population by 1%. So Singapore population is still growing, but at a pretty stable pace. Therefore, the demand is pretty stable. But in this case, that's why I'm focusing on this thing called supply, right? So I, I reminded her about this thing called supply, and I basically said there's no other condo in the area, in the vicinity, and the price point will make it very easy to sell. So number one is supply, and number two is price. Right now, many a times people tell me, "Hey, Pete, you know this condo uh, has this issue, has that issue, uh, can sell or can can we buy it? You know, do you think we can sell it later on?" And I always say, technically, there is no bad condo. Okay, of course, there are certain things that people will not like, but technically, there's no bad condo. There's only a bad price, right? Because if you think about it, guys, if I give you a condo that is all the bad things that you can think about, ah. Uh, Facing the west sun, you know, next to a rubbish chute, facing the car park, uh, what else? Um, uh, a huge balcony, right? A lot of outdoor spaces, not much interior spaces, not enough toilets, for example, not even near the MRT, for example, right? You would think that this property is absolutely horrible, but what if I tell you I'm selling to you at 30% or 40% below the market price, right? Would that be attractive? Right? And if you can straight away buy something that 30-40% below market price, I think that would absolutely be a steal, right? Because there's no such thing as a bad property so long it's the correct price. Because even with all the things that I just mentioned to you, I have also had cases whereby I was able to help one of my clients, actually not me, lah, because I work with uh, agents, right? And they are able to work together with me where we can help them to look out for buyers that one such property. So there's always a buyer for any property. The question is, is it the correct price? Okay, so let's come back to here. So uh, she said, oh, you know, uh, uh, you know, she thinks that uh, the exit will be tough. She foresee that the exit will be tough, right? Because she thinks that 2,000 units is like four condos uh, clubbed together, okay? And, you know, at, at the point in time, I, I said, you know, um, sure, you know, <laughs> basically, I said, you know, go and look at the others with Tracy, basically, that, that's, the, that's the agent, right? And, and she still kept on saying that, you know, wow, uh, future, uh, and I, and I told Tracy and Tracy even said, Hey, Pete, you mentioned before that future launches is about 1008 to 2001. And this was back in 2021, uh, right? Where new launches in the OCR region was not at this price. It was closer to 1004, 1500 per square foot, right? This was about three years ago. And I was telling her and telling the agent that, Hey, we are probably going to see future launches a uh, couple of years time reaching about 1008 and 2001. So later we'll see whether this comes true, okay? Right? So this is a case study so far and I already told you all this is uh, Treasure Japanese, right? So when she has all these concern, um, basically I can't really help her. So number one thing is that I want you all to understand is that if you want to make big money, right, in the property uh, segment, uh, you need to look at the big picture. Now what is the big picture here? is that number one, just now like I said, right, supply-wise is very short. Okay, so Treasure Japanese is over here. Okay, uh, let me just draw it out. Uh. It's over here, okay, right? And you can see that there's no other condo in this picture except for these two over here, right? No nearby condos. And this is a central area of Tampanese, okay? And it is also 
uh, next to it, there's another MRT. And below it, if you can see here, it's actually Simei MRT, right? So my point is basically, hey, you know, there's no other condo nearby and this place comes with technically a uh, three MRT. The nearest one is actually Simei MRT, which you can get to within like six minutes of walking. Whereas on the other side of the Tampanese, okay, right, that is very far from anywhere, there's no MRT, collectively, uh, when you add up all this, right, there is about 5,000 over units. So yes, indeed, Treasure Tampani is not a small condo, but because in that area, there's a lack of condo, if you compare the supply of units in these two areas of Tampanese, actually, the area where, where Treasure is at is actually very undersupply. Okay? But the thing is that when we want to compare and look at this, right, I always tell my client, hey, look at this side of the Tampanis. If there are so many condos, you can count, uh, technically, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? There are eight condos, 5,000 over units. And the question I pose my client is, let's just take a look at the profitability of this area. If this area can make money, then, you know, the certainty for treasure Tampanis is so much higher, right? If this area can make money, I think Tampanis definitely, uh, treasure Tampanis definitely can. And when I did my research and I look at this whole area, what I saw is that most of the condos here, right, when they do a resale, okay, they make money. In fact, over 598 units make a gain and only 53 of them make a loss. So th there's no perfect area, right? So number three, I want you all to take home from this session is that, hey, there is no perfect property. Every property has its downside. Every property that has something then you look out for. There's no area where everything makes money. In fact, if there's some 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 hundred percent number, you need to be very aware because when it's hundred percent, that means something can be wrong. Okay, right. So when I look at that, I tell you, hey, there's a ninety-one percent success rate in the crowded area of Tampanis. Crowded not in terms of people. It's good to have a lot of people, but it crowded in terms of supply of condo. Then the the question is, if Treasure Tampanis is um closer to MRT less competition, more amenities because nearby treasure that's actually food and whatnot, whereas the condo belt at Tampanese Avenue 10, not so much, right? Then my question to my clients back then was, hey, what do you think? Do you think con uh, treasure can make money, right? And I actually did a comparison for them. Now, this is the second point, is that when we look at new launch condo, more often than not, the new launch condo will be more expensive than the resale. Correct or not? Okay, do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you agree? Do you agree? If you agree, type in yes, right? And I say, hey, I want to show you something interesting, right? So I told the client, um, one last shot, uh, I, I gave it to her. I said, hey, I'll show you something, okay? So this is treasure, right? And this is another condo called Tapestry. Now, Tapestry is actually uh, one of the youngest condo in that uh, condo belt that I just showed you here, okay? The tapestry is one of the condo in this one, uh, okay? Back then, it was still under construction, actually. Okay, it's already built now. And I said, hey, take a look. The three beders, the 900 over square feet three beders, were going at about uh, about 1.2 plus to 1.3. And I said, similarly, the three beder in Treasure is also going at about 1.2 plus, right? So if you look at it, on average, it's about a similar price between a new launch condo and a resale condo, right? And this is where it is important to identify, hey, when such opportunity happens, uh, you need to be prepared to take action. A lot of times when I see real estate investors, they are not very uh, profitable, right? It's not just because they don't do a lot of research like what we do, but it's also their inability uh, to take action when the opportunity comes to them. And honestly, I don't blame them, you know, because guys, think about it. If you have not done any research, and suddenly I lay a deal on top of your table. Do you think you can even recognize it in the first place? And even if I tell you it's a good deal, you will be very doubtful because you have not done the numbers yourself or at least you have not been so-called, uh, have the clarity yet of what the numbers actually are, right? So in fact, when I, I spoke to her after all this, I was like, wow, I'm very exasperated already. Okay, so I kind, of, I kind of told her, okay, okay, you can buy other places. And in the end, what happened to Treasure? So let's take a look, huh? This was Treasure back in the 2020 period. They launched about 1,300 plus PSF, right? This is across the three beta and two beta. And today, 
what we see is that across the board, uh, okay, the PSF has risen to about 1.6 or even to high 1.7. Right? We even had a three beta that transacted 1.8. So it's, it's basically a 400, close to a 400 PSF gain over this period. And these guys just collected their keys. That means they haven't even stayed into the house, right? They already made 400 PSF. So let's say if you buy a place that has a thousand PSF, you have already made close to $400,000. Just like that. Okay. So, and in fact, this is not the, the only case, thankfully, uh, right? So for Miss Worry, she missed out on it because there was a lot of things that cloud her judgment. Okay. But whereas there are also other clients which I help along and I help them to make that decision. Okay. Now the thing is this. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do about property. Okay. So I just want to share with you what are the main points. Uh. Number one is this. Is that when you listen out to news out there, right? News sometimes can be meant to scare you. Right. Um, I can honestly tell you uh, why newspaper uh, these, these days are not what I call news, right? It's because they are no longer telling you the actual situation, right? Because they're fighting over so many news articles, right? And they're trying to get your eyeball, your attention, right? And guess what? Unfortunately, human beings, our brain, right? We react to negative news more than positive news, right? So then they say, oh, this place is uh, the largest condo in Singapore, very hard to sell. People were like, oh, they want to read, right? But if I tell you, oh, this is a good condo, can make money, blah, 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 so boring. <laughs> okay. So the thing is, news are always meant to scare you. Right. Number one. Number two is this. Miss Worry, why she got so much biases over treasure, right? It's because she said some of her friends told her about it. Some of her relatives told her about it. And I can tell you, most people in the market that are dealing with real estate on the part time or even like just because they buy a house, right? Don't make them an expert. Okay. Right? They are mostly clueless and, and they might give you the wrong information. Right? So how do you navigate this whole thing uh, to make sure that you're a good property investor? Right? Is that really through a lot of research? Uh, okay? And number crunching. Because numbers don't lie. Numbers will tell you the real situation. Okay? Right? Numbers will tell you the real situation. For example, when I help other clients, thankfully there are other clients who listen to me uh, and I say, hey, you know, this is a good project and, and they say, yeah, why not? Right? And this is an actual unit. I'm just showing you this is an actual unit. Okay? Right? 915 square feet. These are three beders. And you can see this person bought it in January 2021. Okay? At 1.28. Right? 1.28. The downstand neighbor, just a couple of months later, same year 2021, already sold for 1.43. 1.43. So in six months, they already made 150k. Okay? Just because they understand the unique situation that Treasure Japanese provides. Right? And it's not just, you know, three beta, even smaller size one, like two betas over here, you can see that, you know, the purchase in May was uh, 995k, and then later on it was 1.7. Downstairs neighbors sold for more. So technically in two months, they already paper gained 75k. Now the thing is this, of course, you are not going to sell in six months or two months. But what I'm trying to illustrate to you is that when you choose a property correctly and prudently, right, you haven't even moved in, right? You already make money, right? Okay? So that's what I wanted to show you guys up front regarding how do you look at property. I want to use a real case study to share with you all so that you all understand how it works. Okay? And this is one of the client. Anyway, uh, if you don't know, uh, these two pictures is fake one. Uh. Okay, I cover their face. Okay, so I just want to protect the client's identity. But I want to share with you like how um, when you have clarity, uh, you're able to take action. Okay, so for these two clients, uh, thankfully, uh, they are not like Miss Worry. After they have clarity for what we discussed and the number was correct and was good, right? They even went to buy uh, a second floor unit. Right? Because that was, that was all they can afford. Right, to be very honest. But these days, uh, I knew this is a two-beta. Uh, these days, how do you find a two-beta less than a million? Yeah, right? Now when you look back, it seems like, hey, it's such a no-brainer deal. But I can guarantee you at that point in time, it wasn't such a clear-cut situation. That's why understanding the numbers, understanding the situation of the property, it is so important. Okay? And today, the same property, right, will be already selling at 1.1 something. In terms of PSF gain, is already close to like, 200 plus. So they make over like 200k 
uh, profit uh, for their two bedder. And one more lesson before I go into today's uh, main lesson, uh, <laughs> okay, is this. Um, this one may not apply to everybody, uh, but when you're buying a property, right, I would often encourage my clients, uh, if you can, buy the bigger property. In fact, you want, to, you want to buy as big as possible. Why? Because these days after COVID, right, I can tell you um, on the ground, uh, when I work with my partner agents, they are the one doing a lot of the viewing. I do the research. So that's why we partner very well, right? And we help our clients together. Is that a lot of people right now, they don't like small units. So right now, yes, even new launches, a lot of the three bidders are super small, two bidders are super small. So I always encourage people, buy as big as you can, right? So, so for example, when this couple came to me, right? Young couple, um, they were in they were at least thinking at one bidder at the condo. But when I crunched their numbers and we did a bit of uh, resource allocation for them, right? And we optimized it a little bit, right? I realized that, hey, actually, if they really go for it, uh, they can actually get a four bidder in treasure. Now, the thing is this, uh, um, is it scary for a young couple from a one bedder condo, right? Straight away upgrade to a four bedder. Of course it's scary. I'm not going to lie to you that they, they, they just take my, uh, my suggestion uh, wholeheartedly. But when I did the numbers, I said, hey, think about it. Because back then it was still during COVID. Uh. I said, hey, think about it. Nowadays people want big spaces. And that's one of the reasons why you are going to upgrade. Because initially, you know what they wanted to do? They just wanted to upgrade from a one bedder to a two bedder. Now guys, think about it. Uh. Which one would have fetched them more profit today if they just bought a two beta versus a four beta? Right? So, guys, last point I want to share with you before I go into the, today's lesson, right? Is that you need to understand property is a numbers game. Okay? As much as possible, uh, try to be emotionless about it. But I can tell you it's very tough sometimes because property is whereby. Um, you get to touch and feel. A lot of times people got very uh, strong uh, opinion about certain areas, be it positive or negative, right? So it, it can be quite tough. And that's why when I come in and help them, right? I help them to remove their biases and basically help them to understand the numbers. And I say basically is this. If you're buying a two beta, okay, you are going to pay about maybe $1 million. When you're buying a four beta, back then, uh, now I don't think got this price, right? <laughs> you are going to pay about 2.7 to about 2.9. A lot. It's a lot of money. But when these two prices, let's say they both go up, right? Which one will give you more profit? For sure, it's the two over million, right? So after understanding that, and I show them the numbers, and I say it's actually not a stretch at all, they realize that, hey, 4 beta is something that they can go for. Okay? So once again, I just want to share with you guys uh, this case study to illustrate some of the points about property investing. But more importantly, is that really, um, out there, there are a lot of um, advertisements. Lah. Okay? Um, having said that, do I do advertisements myself? Yes, I do, right? But the real truth is this, and I want to be 100% honest because you guys are from Next Level community. I'm a close friend to Sean and I want to make sure that you guys get max value. Is that really trust yourself, uh, not on the emotions front, but on the research and the numbers. Okay? All right. So that is the case study. We actually haven't started today's lesson yet. Uh. Okay, so for those of you who are ready, okay, so guys, if you are ready, for today's session, okay, I want to go through a lot of the macro picture to help you to understand uh, this year in 2024, how is it going to be like for property? Okay, and I also want to show you what is this whole situation uh, going to be like, not just in 2024, but going beyond that. Because when you're buying a property, right, guys, bear in mind, uh, it is not going to be like stock market where you can buy today, sell tomorrow. You are likely going to hold for at least three to four years. So you want to understand how it rolls. Okay, and at the end of it, uh, if I have some time, I, I also share with you all some strategy. And before I bring on um, my offer to you guys at the end of the day, okay, and I'm very certain you will benefit from it. Okay, now let me go into the first segment, right? Is that actually there's a report that I think many of you can actually go and download and have a look. And it's actually by our Singapore NUS, National University. They basically ask developers uh, and even buyers, right, to talk about what are the concerns they have. Okay, and this is actually some of the potential risks that um, the developers highlighted in the survey. Okay, so this is from the NUS Real Estate uh, survey. And when they pull the correspondence, uh, uh, respondents, sorry, <laughs> respondents, uh, they say the number one potential risk they think, right, is a slowdown in economy. Right? So what about price? You know, is, are the properties too expensive? 
And actually, that concern is very, very low. Right, look over here. It's a real estate bubble or speculative activities. It's actually at an all-time low. It's only like 2% of the respondents say that. The rest are basically saying, oh, no, economy not good. Lah. Higher inflation, high interest rate, so on and so forth. Okay, right? And this is on the risk front. So later, I'm going to talk about the risk, which is the economic slowdown. Are we going to see uh, economic slowdown? Right? Because to be very frank, if there is going to be economic slowdown, surely property price will come down. Okay? Right? So let's let's take a look over here. Okay? So when we look at uh number one is interest rate. Okay? Now, how is interest rate going to change? Right? Few weeks back, we just had another FOMC and basically they gave us their forecast. Now, this is called the dot plot. Okay? D-O-T, uh, dot plot. So basically how FOMC works, the Federal Reserve in the US, uh, how it works is this. They have a group of people each of them got one dot. So imagine you got a whiteboard in front of you, right? <laughs> and you just go up there and place your sticker, right? And each one of them is allowed to pay sticker for, let's say, 2024, 2025, 2026. They will put their dots or go into the future. And this year, basically, they are saying that the rates are going to be similar, about maybe 4.75 in the US. But the next year, okay, you can see that they are quite certain that it is going to be around 3.5 to 4. And by 2026, the consensus now is overwhelmingly at about 2.75 to about 3.25. And going beyond that, in 2027, they are looking at 2.5. Okay. In fact, the Federal Reserve also declared the actual numbers. So this year, right now, they are at 4.6. They predict next year will be 3.6. So a 1% cut uh, by next year. And by 2026, they are looking at 2.9, right? So a less significant cut is a 0.7 cut. And really by longer term, they are returning it to 2.5. And on top of that, not just Federal Reserve, right? The IMF also said very recently, this of year, that they are expecting a very soft landing already. Okay, they are confident that inflation is on a sustainable path towards 2%. And this is by Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve. Now, why is this important? Because I want to talk about the emotional part again. Because last time when I was um, in, uh, helping clients, right? When the rates increase, uh, guys, do you remember when the rates increase, right? What do people say? People say, hey, Pete, you know, the economy will crash under high interest rate. Better don't buy, right? And then recently, what do we see the Federal Reserve do? The Federal Reserve basically say, hey, you know, uh, we're going to hold the interest rate steady, right? And they say, hey, Wow, they hold rates there. Oh no, why they never drop the rates? Ah? Maybe the economy is still not very good. Maybe better don't buy. Okay. And right now, they are telling you with almost 100% certainty. Ah, if there's a way for me to bet the interest rate like that, ah, I will bet a lot. No? Because they are almost telling you with 100% certainty that we are going to cut rates this year. So that next year, it will be 1% lower. So they're going to drop rates, right? But guess what? When I talk to people where they let their emotional take place, right? They will say, huh, hey, why are they dro dropping rates? <laughs> Something's wrong, okay? Right, better don't buy. So the, the thing is, there will never be a good situation, good time to buy uh, if you are clueless and you're just letting the news sweeping you left, right and center, okay? So how I look at it is this. Is number one, think clearly what you should do. The... Fact on the ground right now is this. Interest rate will come down. Right? But what should you do? Okay? Because on a real basis, uh, there are people who ask me this. This is a real question. Or they say, hey, Pete, since you say interest rate will come down, right? Okay. Right? Why don't I just wait for the interest rate to drop uh, before I buy? So that I can have a lower mortgage, uh, correct? Not, right? Because now, you let's say you pay uh 3.7% for interest. Right? And if it's going to drop to like 2 point something, why don't I just wait then I buy so that my mortgage rate is lower. Okay? And my reply is this. Uh, is that, hey, guess what? When the interest rate drops, yes, your mortgage will be lower. But what else is going to happen when interest rate drops? All the buyers that have been holding off because they feel that the interest rate is very high, what do you think they will do that in this future environment when the interest rate is going to come down. Right? And I can tell you that the effects of interest rate going up is not proportionate to the effects of interest rate going down. Why? 
Now, last time when interest rate goes up, why the price never increase? Very simple, because people can just choose not to sell. They will tighten their belt, pay a bit more mortgage, but they will not fire sale their house. That is the strength of the Singapore market. And those who wanted to buy, they'll just hold it off. They'll say, hey, high interest rate, let me just not buy first, right? And they have a lot of money on the side, a lot of firepower. But now, when the interest rate has dropped, guess what? Firstly, those who have been holding off, they were thinking of what to buy. Those who have been holding their units and they are not selling, now they will be thinking about, ah, maybe now I'm a bit more, you know, able to afford a bigger place. They will start to think what to do. So while interest rate go up, the price held steady. And now the interest is going down. My belief is that it's going to run out a lot. Okay? So think about it. Yes, your mortgage payment can be lesser, but what about the change in price? Will your change in price be much bigger? <laughs> okay? Because yes, you might get a lower interest rate, but what if the price becomes a lot bigger? There might not be a difference uh, in your mortgage payment. Okay? So this is one thing that I want to share with you guys in terms of the macro basis. What is happening on the ground? Okay? And why do I think the property prices is going to continue to increase? Now, there are many other factors. Uh, i just show you uh, a few more. Uh, the next one is actually when they poll the developers, they ask them, hey, what do you think about the price changes? And there's quite a fair bit of them. Uh, either thinks that the price is going to stay the same, which is the green color, or actually they're looking at the price increasing moderately higher. So basically, if you add these two numbers out, right, almost 90 plus percent of people are, are saying that the price is going to be flat or up. It's not going to come down. So how should that inform you uh, as a property buyer, right, is that if you delay, okay, if you delay, there is no savings at all. If you hold off any purchases, especially if you're upgrading, there is no savings at all because prices are very unlikely to drop. Now, why is it unlikely to drop? And that's the reason why I like this survey because they ask very relevant questions. And the develop and these are developers, uh, by the way. These are not common folks. These are developers. These are guys who are on the ground directly having the hands on the pulse of the property market. They literally make a living based on property prices. Okay? So when they tell you, you better be listening up, right? So they ask them, hey, you know, what are the level of concerns regarding your costs? And they have overwhelmingly said that hey, we have a very serious worry uh, about what? About land costs. Over one third of them say that they are worried that land price is going to go up. But why is land price going up? Think about it. Who determines the land price? It's not government. Uh, because it's an open bidding system. So it's basically the developers themselves feel that their companion <laughs> or their competitor is going to beat up the local prices, you know. And with higher land prices and of course the other rising costs like labor, building materials, right? Unanimously, uh, over 60% of them all felt that developmental costs are going to go up. So guys, if I, if I ask you that um, we're going to see higher land prices because of competition between developers, plus the building cost is higher, what's going to happen to property prices when they launch? Can they launch at a discount? Can they launch at a loss? It is very unlikely. Right? That's why when we look at property prices last year, in the last quarter, uh, this is what we see. Right? We saw that in 2023, overall property prices changed by 6.8%. Now, this is what I call an average number. Now, honestly, I hate to use average number. Why? Because average number doesn't tell you the truth. Because if you break it down further, when you look across different regions, so you can see over here there's CCR, RCR, OCR. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with these terms, basically CCR is the core central region, which is your district 9, 10, 11, right? And your RCR is a few regions that's outside of it, right? Not going very far. And basically the rest of the Singapore in the out, outer area is called OCR. And you can see that all oh, that 6.8%, actually majority came from OCR. Majority came from there. Okay, over 13% of them. Now, why did CCR, RCR perform so badly in 2023? Whereas in 2020, 2022, the year before, right? Actually, they did decent, you know. Right? Why? Because, especially in the CCR region, the central district 910 area, right? It was very much affected by the 60% ABSD. Now, why does this affect them? Because central area actually has the highest number of foreigner demand. 
And this kind of evaporated overnight uh, once the government slapped a 60% additional buyer stamp duty. And that's why the demand dropped. On top of that, with the change in expat package, right, there are a lot more business people right now moving towards the outskirts uh, to look for property, to look for a cheaper property to buy. Okay? And at the same time, what we right now saw is that with this situation, okay, uh, we are also seeing a bit of weakening in rental. Rental is starting to come down over here. Now, why is rental coming down? Pete, you just said that prices are going up, right? But rental coming down, eh, should I be worried? Okay, so let me explain to you what's happening. Okay, this is just my opinion, but um, later I'll show you why I think so as well. And this picture is one that I believe everybody here must understand. If you understand this picture, right? If you, or in fact, if you don't understand this picture, you are not investing. You are playing with fire. Or in fact, you are missing out what I call an opportunity, uh, maybe in a decade or, or so. Now, let me explain. Last year, okay, so as we're talking this 2024, right? Last year, 2023, actually we had a crazy number of units uh, uh, coming online. So if you read this chart over here, it says year of completion. Now, what does this mean? This means this 20K is not referring to, oh, this year we have a new launch, right? For example, recently, uh, there's a lot of Lenton new launch coming out, right? We are not referring to that, no. We are talking about this unit that's being delivered <laughs> in 2023. That means the owners collected keys from a developer or TOP. Okay. That means this number actually was already set in stone back in 2019 or 2018, depending on the project uh, development speed. Because this project would have already been sold back then in order to be delivered now. You agree? You understand? Okay, if you understand what I'm trying to say here, type yes. Because this is very important. If you don't understand this, I can I cannot explain further. Okay, right? So what does that mean? That means what we see in 2024, 2025, and 2026, can you see there's a very significant shortfall over here? A very sharp dip uh, in supply of units, you know. And this number, when I show it to my clients, they say, hey Pete, you know, uh, maybe these numbers will go up. And I say, no, there's no way. Why? Because whatever this year, for example, this 11,000, for it to go up, even if I launch today and I build immediately, the new units will only come when? Beyond 2027. Okay? So what I'm seeing here is that this few years, all the way to 2027, basically the number of units that's going to come online is already set in stone already. At most, what they can do is bring forward by one year, for some of the projects, but not much. There is no way they can change these numbers drastically unless there's a special way that they can build super fast. And that also means with a pretty much consistent supply, I told you, right, our demand, sorry, a uh, consistent demand. Our demand is pretty consistent, right? With a pretty consistent demand, but a dropping supply, what do you think is going to happen to the price? What's going to happen? Okay, right. And that is an important point that many people miss out because this year they will just see that, hey, rental is going down. Why? Because last year we had 20,000 units. Of course, the renters are spoiled for choice. But what you can see is that prices are not budging. Right? Prices are not budging because owners are also quite smart. Right? They are willing to cut the rent, but they're not willing to cut the price. Because rent is okay, maybe you just drop your rent by a few hundred bucks, that's fine. But if you drop your price, that's going to be thousands and thousands of dollars. Okay? So, this is what is happening on the ground. Lower, lower supply going to the next few years. And this has happened before, you know. Right? Back in 2015, 2016, we saw a sharp drop in supply as well. And what happened thereafter in 20, 2017, 2018? Okay? If you look at the property price index, this is the index tracking Singapore property, especially the non-landed property. All right, you can see that 2017-2018 is when we saw the current bull run started, even going into COVID. Okay, so while history doesn't always repeat itself, but it rhymes, right? So we are seeing a very sim similar situation here back in 2015-2016 happening right now, going downwards. So why am I talking about this? Because if you take action right now, then you have a good chance of reaping the benefits when the supply suddenly falls off the cliff in 2025. That's where you see the impact in the market. Okay, so this is a supply 
picture. Now, let me talk about demand picture. Other than the fact that it's 1%, right? Just now remember, we talked about one of the concerns is uh, that uh, a lot of the developers have, right? Is what? Is, hey, will the economic situation be worse? Will the global situation be worse? In fact, will the domestic economy be worse? Now, global, I already share with you, interest rates going to come down. But let's look at the domestic situation. Okay? So, in 2023, the growth was around 1%. Right, this was done uh, late in 2023, so it's, in the end, it turned out to be 1.6. In 2024, the forecast is actually between 1% to 3%. So what does that mean? That means it's likely going to be about 2%, you know. Right? And one more thing I want to highlight to you guys this. For those of you who are not from Singapore, you're watching this, right? Um, or those of you who are Singaporeans, <laughs> maybe you can help them, okay? Singapore government, when they make forecasts like this, are they usually more aggressive with the forecast or are they usually more conservative with the forecast? Type your answer in the chat. Okay, aggressive type A, conservative type C. And for those of you who are watching the chat right now, you will see that there are a lot of C's coming out. <laughs> yes, indeed, our government is very prudent. If they were to give you a forecast, that means they are confident they are likely going to hit higher. That's why they want to be conservative. Right? They don't want to over-promise you. So to me, this is a, actually a very positive figure because if we did 1.6 this year and we did, let's say, 2 plus, okay, I don't know how much we did 2 plus, that means we're going to almost right, have a 60 to 80% gain in GDP numbers. Okay? Take note, huh? 2 plus percent to 1.6%, the difference is not a lot in terms of percentage points, but... When you look at it in terms of absolute figure, it is going to be a 60 to 80% difference. And this number is also corroborated uh, by a group of professional forecasters. And I follow these guys quite uh, often. Why? Because uh, this is the MES survey of professional forecasters. So what they do uh, is that they bring a group of 25 economies and analysts to kind of forecast the Singapore economy. Right? We don't know who these people are. But one thing I know is that if these people can show you track record, uh, this is someone that you want to trust, right? In fact, when it comes to property, when my clients ask me, hey, Pete, you know, um, how do I know whether your prediction, your opinions is going to be solid? And I say, just don't look at me, but look at my clients. Uh. <laughs> look at my past clients. If they make money, uh, which a lot of them did, then you know that I know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> okay, so this is a bit of shameless uh, plug here, but this is exactly what... I was looking for out for myself as well. What I asked my client to do, I asked that of myself. Okay? So when I look at these 25 economies and analysts, uh, now you look at this, this is their track record. The median forecast is the X, that means what they forecasted. And the red line is the actual situation thereafter. And you can see that they are correct most of the time. 9 out of 10 times they are correct. Now guys, if someone is 9 out of 10 times accurate, uh, you really want to pay attention to so what did they say about our GDP growth, our economic growth in 2024, right? They said this. Majority of them voted that they think the GDP growth is going to be around 2 to 2.9%. That means they are saying that the GDP project to expand roughly like in the middle, 2.5%. So is that going to be a contraction in our local business, local domestic economy? I don't think so, right? In fact, interestingly, they also asked them about private real estate property index. They asked them, hey, in terms of the survey, okay, property prices uh, in 2023, when they asked them in 2022, uh, okay, how's it going to be like? Actually, 30% of them say it's going to be lower, you know. But when they asked them about 2024, this year, the survey came out much more positive. Can you see that the number of people saying that it's lower has dropped down to just 11% instead of 30%. Majority of them is saying that the prices, once again, in line with what the developers are saying, uh, the prices is either going to be stable or most likely it's going to be higher. So once again, what we can see from this number is that it doesn't pay for anybody to put off your property decision from here. Why? especially for those of you who are upgrading, because if you are buying something that, let's say, is like 1 million, okay, you, sorry, you have something that's 1 million, okay? For simplicity's sake, you're buying something that's 2 million later on. And the property price is going to go up by 
Now, do you want to wait for property price to go up by 5% so that you can sell this at 1.05? Or do you want to wait after you buy the $2 million property and let it go up by 5%? Okay? You see what I'm saying here? Right? Because in this case, 5% will be what? Will be 2.1 million? 100k versus 50k. Which one do you want? Okay, so if it's not going to go lower, that isn't any benefit to wait as well. All right, so this is the current situation in the market. And I will say there are a lot more things to share with you guys. In fact, I will say this year is a crazy year because we are likely going to see uh, quite a fair bit of new launches coming up. All right, so I've compiled all the new launch number, right? Uh, I don't have time to go through everything because I realize I'm running short of time, but I can just show you some figures very quickly, right? Okay, and for those of you who want to know more, I can share with you all, I can show you all later on uh, how I can share with you all more. Is that when you look at all the new launches that is coming up this year, okay, this year in uh, 2024, right, I've compiled some of the new launch figure already, right? So these are the approximate figure that is going to come up. Firstly, we can see that in the outer region uh, other than ECs in fact ECs already reached 1,500 per square foot now guys do you remember just now when I show you about trash dampenies a full-fledged condo uh, not EC uh, back then I uh, was only selling at 1,000, 3,000, and right now EC is already way past that price okay and that's why when you look at Tampanese Condo Avenue 11 right our forecast is that it's going to launch at about 1,009 the Lantor series about 2,001 to 2,300 okay Bukit Dima link because of the location and the demand in the area, our forecast is even higher, 2,650. Now, in the very popular area, for example, Clementi, Pine Grove, Propayo, you can see that it's quite standard. The launch price is going to range around 2,005 to about 2,006. These are new launch prices. Okay? And the blue color is basically whatever is in the central region, right? And the prices are going to be much higher than that. And this is something that is already happening on the ground, right? So why I want to show you these numbers is that so that when you go and look at the property, I want you to bear something in mind is that ask yourself the question, does this number look too high or too low? Because remember at the very beginning, I said, there's no such thing as a bad property so long it's at the correct price, right? So long it's at a good price, at the correct price, there is no bad property. So ask yourself, is this too high or too low? I want all of you to put down in the chat. Okay, think about it. Think about it. Recently, Lentor mentioned they said that they sold seventy five percent at a price from two point one. Wow. To me, this is a bit misleading, uh, Why? Because it's from uh, it's not like average two point one. That means what? All the prices are gonna be higher than this two point one. <laughs> In fact, what was the average sales price of Lentor mentioned? If you look at the actual sales figure. It was much, much more closer to 2.2, even to 2.3 thousand per square foot. Lentor mansion, Lentor area, where there's not much land. <laughs> okay, not much happening. Uh. Uh, Lentoria, which is another condo nearby, right? On average, how much did they sell? Actually, also very similar, close to 2,200 plus plus, right? And this is why right now when people ask me, hey, will property price drop from here? My reply is very, very unlikely. Why? Because the developers are actually not making a lot of money uh, selling at this price. So as much as you may not like what I'm going to say next is that property prices, I think is not going to drop from here. Simply because it's not that developers are greedy and they jack up the price, but it's because they already bought it at a higher price and the cost of building is just higher. So there is no way they can actually make it a lot cheaper, right? There is no way they're going to make it a lot cheaper for you. Okay, so this is really quite important and quite key that I want all of you to understand. All right, now let me talk about my quick summary is that if there's one takeaway from all these about Singapore property is that number one, Okay, uh, my observation uh, from helping more than 200 families, right? Is that number one, with the rates coming down and the stronger economy that I just showed you, 
I think there's going to be a renewed buying interest. Look at Lentor uh, mentioned. 2.2 PSF in the outskirts region and they sold 75%. My gosh. Before that, the buying sentiment was quite low in the Lentor area. You go and look at Lentoria, Lentor Hill Residences, Lentor Modern, they didn't sell so well. So it is happening already. Okay. Secondly, the lower supply plus cooling measures is something that will continue to push prices higher. Now, lower supply, I think you already understood. But why, Pete, why do you say cooling measures help property prices to go higher? You must remember, actually cooling measures made the Singapore property market very resilient. There is no speculation, right? Because of TDSR, TDSR is Total Debt Servicing Ratio, where you cannot buy a property that is way out of your means of affordability, right? And plus the ABSD, even for locals, your ABSD is 20%. You wouldn't be buying two or three property. Most likely, you're going to buy one. In fact, most investors in Singapore, they have one property, not two, not three. So what this means is that they have very strong holding power. And right now, a lot of them are looking at, hey, if I cannot buy a place that's bigger, better value, I'm just not going to buy. Not going to sell, sorry. So if you're going to have lower fresh supply plus lower resale supply, it is going to push the market higher. Okay, you understand, right? It's not a direct relation, uh, but if I explain this to you I, I, in this way, I hope you understand, okay? But just take note, I think this year is still going to be a great time for people to look at um, uh, buying a new place, especially if you have plans to like, hey, I want to buy a bigger place or I want to increase my investment asset in property, right? I think this year is still going to be a great year. Why? Because of that 20,000 units I showed you earlier on, okay? Um, in, in my opinion, when I talk to my uh, partners and I do my research, I think prices are going to hold for a while. For that 20k supply, uh, plus this year about 12k supply, to really get digested so that the shortfall in supply will then happen later on. So once this is being taken up, the supply short term is being taken up, then I do expect the prices to run. Okay? Uh, year on year, I expect the prices to increase by about 4 to 6% because we're going to spend a large amount of time uh, just basically churning. Uh, okay, just basically the price is just churning. So it's going to be increased lesser than last year. But take note, it is not a reason for you to delay. Why? Because it is still going up at 4 to 6%. So unless you're telling me you're willing to pay that 4 to 6% more, then you should be taking an action if your plans are ready. Okay, now, how do you get your plans ready? Okay, I'm, I realize I only have like 10 minutes left. Huh? Okay, so I just share with you one actual case study that I did. Hopefully that fits most of your profile and I want to use an actual scenario to share with you. Okay, right. So the first thing I want to ask you guys is like, it depends on what is your situation. Are you a family buying? Are you a single buying young person, senior, senior couple, right? So I would say the majority of the clients that I deal with, right, comes from the family side. Okay, so for example, uh, this is not the actual picture of my client. I just put this as a placeholder, okay? But uh, Mr. and Mrs. K, when they first came to me, they were in their 40s, okay? And they have two wonderful children. They stayed in the HDB that they own. And after that, later on, they bought a OCR condo for rental. Now, back in the days, uh, there isn't ABSD, so they could do this, right? So they say, hey, Pete, you know, uh, our situation is quite good because we each own one, one HDB, one condo, but it's not great la, because they rent out the condo for a bit of passive income. But honestly, in Singapore, our rental is a very slow game, right? And I would say HDB prices is at all time high right now. So when they came to me, uh, they say, hey, Pete, do you have any idea what else can we do? So I took a while, sit down with them, we go through their plans. And basically our strategy is this, is to change them to a higher level game. And the objective is very simple, is that I want to help them to increase the total value of their asset, right? This is something that you would want to aim to do, okay? Right, so firstly, I look at the HDB that's in the OCR region, it's fully paid already. So number one, I say, hey, there's a lot of value, a lot of cash that's being locked up over here, right? That you can actually use it for the down payment for the next house, okay? Now let me add something, uh, is that both of them are having a full-time income. So both of them are healthy. They are not in debt or anything. Okay, so if you're in debt or anything, then property shouldn't be in your mind. Huh? Okay, so this is a prerequisite. But if you fulfill the prerequisite, both of you are dual income, right? In the family, you're able to afford it. Then this is where you can look at how to increase the total value of your asset. Okay, so number two, I look at the 
two bedroom condo in the OCR as well. I said, hey, it's renting quite well, uh, but the area has very limited upside. Why? Because that area, um, I won't say where, uh, but the area doesn't have a lot of development. It's a very quiet place, it's quite stagnant. Okay? So I say the goal is this we want to help them to move, right? To own stay at a three bedroom condo. At the same time, they can still own another investment property. Okay? So what did we do? Basically, we took the HDB, right? The agent helped them to sell. Uh, it was valued at about 700k. The agent did a fantastic job, and I really love working with wonderful agents. Huh? Okay? 760k. The OCR two bedroom valuation valuation was about one million, right? The agent also managed to get them one point one million. So it's, it's extra one hundred sixty k upfront already, you know. And what you can do once you have all these cash over valuation right, is to just plow it back into the investment property. So number one, we say, hey, let's go and look at own stay condo first. So this is something that you can bear in mind. If it's an own stay condo, I always tell people, don't buy too expensive. Because the more expensive you buy in this own stay condo, ah. Uh, the more you deprive from the investment property later on, right? The more you more you buy, put inside here, the more you take from here. That's what not what you want to do, right? So I managed to find for them in a location that they're happy with. Okay, three beta, one point three million. Now today I would say one point three, maybe a bit harder, maybe slightly more, one point four, one point five. Different location, I cannot be the same location, right? But it was still possible, right? So I can help people to look at this. And I took the rest of the money. I said, hey, let's go and buy something that was very overlooked. Remember just now I told you there's an area that people don't like uh, because no foreigner. So the prices hasn't been increasing. Prices keep dropping. Yes, that is central region. Okay. So I know out there that a lot of people talking about central region being very bad. I can, and I can confidently tell you they will be regretting in a couple of years to come. Okay. Anyway, so I helped them to buy CCR or actually RCR. Lah, technically RCR. Okay. <laughs> Two bedroom, about 1.9. Right, and the timeline is that they managed to move from here, the HDB, to stay here smoothly without having to rent in the middle, and they can just buy. So their total asset value, uh, guys. Okay, after that, right, their total asset value grew from a one point nine to a four point two million dollars. You know, one point nine to four point two million dollars. So why is this important? Because if you increase your holding asset value, that means if the overall property market, let's say uh, in a matter of a few years, go up by 20%. Uh, okay, let's say five years go up by 20%. Now, 20%, you want to multiply it by 1.9? Or do you want to multiply it by 840k? Right? Think about it. You want it by 1.9? <laughs> or 4.2? And the difference is that the appreciation from 380 to 840k. Very, very different. Right? This could be life-changing money, retirement-changing money. Okay? And I always call Mr. Mrs. K my action taker of the year because in that short span of five months, not only they tran uh, transacted their local property and shift into a higher asset value, right? They also went to buy overseas property. So in total, they did six properties. Increasing the total asset value to 4.2 million. Right? Really action taker of the year. Okay, and I just want to use this to encourage all of you that it is really possible uh, for you to take massive action, right? And have a change in your future plans. Because right now, when I do this for them, right? Then uh, Mr. K uh, over here, he actually came to me and he said, Wow, oh, Pete, now, right, I'm so much more certain uh, of my retirement plans. Because he no longer need to think about, hey, when I retire, how uh, will I have money or not? He said, when I retire, very simple. Uh, I just sell some of the properties, then maybe I buy the HDB and I stay inside uh, and I'll be cash rich. It's as simple as that. Okay? Right? So this is something that I want to share with you to encourage all of you and I hope that it also inspires you uh, in terms of your property plans because um, I think this year is a very rare opportunity, right? Where we saw uh, that we have this kind of opportunity sets that is happening to us right now. Very, very rare that we have a drop in supply, but at the same time, we have huge, good economic outcome that only took place uh, uh, close about 10 years ago, right? So I don't know when the next opportunity like this is going to come. Uh, don't wait for it. Don't miss out the opportunity, okay? 
And for those of you who stayed throughout this session, I just want to offer you guys something uh, at the end of it, right? So for those of you who know, I do this as a as my as my uh, work. Okay, I do charge clients for uh, engaging me in doing property research and analyze property for them. Okay. However, for all of you here who are at the next level, right, I have a very special offer for you. Okay. So you're not going to pay my listed price of seven thousand five hundred for one property research or twelve thousand for two properties. In fact, for today, for those of you who are interested, you can scan the QR code over here. All right, or the link is actually right here at Rebrandly, is that the price is whatever you want. <laughs> okay, whatever you want. So what price will you want? Type in the chat. What price will you want? Wow, zero. Ah. You're damn greedy. Eh? Zero. Ah. Really? Ah? Yeah. Okay, so if you all want it, yes, today for the next level community, I'm not going to charge my usual consultation fee. I'm going to make it free for any of you who wants my help, okay? But one thing is this, uh, when you engage my help, right? Please don't waste my time, okay? And don't waste your own time. Uh. If you are not going to take your property investment seriously, one, please don't apply. Uh. Only those of you who feel that, hey, whatever I just shared with you today, you agree and you really want my help, then you can scan this QR code and apply for it. And I want to do my best to help you, okay? But for those of you who are not serious, uh, then I hope that you learn a lot from this session as well. Okay, so that's all I wanted to share with all of you in this uh, very short one hour sharing. Now, for those of you who want to uh, learn more from me, you want me to do more research for you and understand further about property development and you're serious to grow your properties uh, just like Mr. and Mrs. K, right? Okay, you can scan the QR code over here, right? Put in your applications for my one-on-one and my team will get in touch with you very, very soon. Okay, so I hope you all learned a lot from this session and I'll see you all next time. All right, bye-bye.